What if I told you there's a man who moved to a different country, leaving behind everybody he knows, including his family, to live in the mountains alone, working what could possibly be the loneliest job in the world. This man's name is Pedro, and he is constantly on the move, never camping in the same place for too long. The amount of responsibility he takes on is tremendous because he's in charge of the lives of hundreds of animals. And without him, they could go missing. The majority of his time is spent in isolation. So if any problems come up or he runs into trouble, he'll have to figure it out on his own. Why would he do all this? Well, let's take a closer look at the life of a sheep herder. I've spent a lot of time in the mountains of Utah, and quite often, I'll run into a sheep herder. They'll greet me outside of their camp as I pass by, and they're almost always friendly. Oh yeah. Because of the language barrier, our conversation is usually brief. As I continue on my way, I always leave the conversation more curious about the sheep herder than before. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Their life seems hard and lonely. But yet, they're always in a good mood. Why is that? Well, let's go camp a few nights with the sheep herder and figure this all out. This is my buddy Morgan. He's a YouTuber and he films videos of his family's large sheep operation. In the summer, they graze multiple herds high in the mountains. They employ a single sheep herder for each herd that stays with the sheep 24 seven. Morgan invited me to camp a few nights with one of the herders named Pedro. Mr. Mickle, we get to fit in with this uh, sheep bell here? I don't know, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but meeting Pedro isn't easy because this is where he's camped. There are no roads in the area, so the best way to get to his camp is on the back of a horse or mule. And because we're staying a few nights, we have a lot of gear to pack in. <laughs> All outside. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. No thanks. Now we're talking. Well, we're finally off. We're heading up the trail. How far do you think we got? Oh, it's probably five miles. Maybe not quite that far. The boss man says about five miles. It's straight uphill. Straight up. So it sounds like we're about to gain some elevation here. Although the trail was fairly short, it took us over four hours to ride the five miles because the trail was straight up. We're on top of the world up here. We've gained a lot of elevation really fast. This is Tyler. Mike. 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 Hello, how are you doing? Hey guys. Mike, good to meet you too. Troy, Victor, and Ty. When I arrived at camp, I didn't expect to see so many people, let alone a five star meal cooking on the stove. Whoa, boy, I sure appreciate it. We didn't know we were going to get treated this way. Oh, man, thank you. Oh, you can't beat it. Earlier that day, some of Morgan's family and friends helped Pedro pack his camp to a new location. For the last few weeks, he camped halfway up the mountain, and he'll spend another few weeks in this location before he moves on to the next camp. But Morgan's family visits Pedro more than once a month because they have to bring him supplies and food every so often. How often do you guys do supply drops for him? So most of the time we try and do basically every seven days, but some places are farther away than others and we stretch it out to 10 or whatever it may be. And they're taking care of our livelihood, and if they're not taking care of, then they're not going to take care of us. So we always try and do our best to make sure that they've got what they need. And we order stuff off Amazon all the time for them whenever they need a, a new phone or they want a battery or whatever it may be. We order. Other than the occasional hiker that passes nearby, the only time Pedro sees people during the summer is when Morgan's family packs him in supplies. We're at camp now. We've settled in, kind of unpacked all of our stuff. And we're gonna go out and do the first chore of the day. I think we gotta haul some salt to the sheep. It's starting to get a little cooler out here, so the sheep are gonna start working their way up the mountain. So we're gonna go follow the herder, see what he's got going on this evening. 
I really hadn't spoke much to Pedro at this point, and he slipped out of camp to do his job before we realized he was gone. He really didn't seem all that interested in what we were doing, but not in a bad way. It was more like he was focused on getting his job done, and whether we were there or not, he was gonna stick to his daily routine. Almost right on cue, sheep started appearing from the clearing below. It seems like the salt and minerals chum the sheep in, and while there's some truth to that, what's going on here is a little more complex. So I'll try my best to explain what's happening. Sheep have a natural instinct to graze uphill. When they're left alone on the mountain, they'll almost always try to walk to the top of it. So knowing this, Pedro will position his camp above where the sheep are feeding. In the mornings, he herds the sheep downhill, and throughout the day, they'll graze uphill towards camp. But in order to keep the grass healthy and prevent overgrazing, he has to move the herd to a new location every day. Right now, Pedro, I'm not sure if he went off that side or if he went over here. All he's doing is he's gonna go just look and see if he can see the rest of the sheep because the whole bunch probably isn't right here. So he's just gonna gather them all up and make sure everything's all in the group so they can come and be bedded in the same spot tonight as the sun goes down. Pedro disappeared for about an hour before returning with the stragglers. Then he moved the herd to a clearing near camp where they'll bed down for the night. He was careful not to leave any sheep behind because there are predators in the area like bears, lions, and coyotes. If any of the sheep are left behind and singled out from the herd, they could be easy prey for anything that's hungry. But the herd is safe for the night because they're in good hands. Or should I say, good paws. Have you ever seen these, uh, these great Pyrenees dogs that they run with the sheep? Yes. Over a year ago, this great Pyrenees fought off a pack of 11 coyotes. And protected his owner's sheep by engaging in a fierce 30-minute battle with nearly a dozen coyotes, killing eight of them in the process. I can't be out with my sheep, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, but the dogs are. After all the work was done for the evening, Pedro made his way up the hill towards camp, and I finally got a chance to talk to him. Morgan knows a little Spanish, so he was going to try his best to translate. So it's understandable. <laughs> like, he didn't want to say, but he's like, yeah, it's it's understandable. <laughs> My Spanish isn't very good. Do you feel like you can communicate with him pretty good, though? Yeah. You know, like, I can understand what he says, because I, I speak fluent Portuguese, and Portuguese and Spanish are really similar. <laughs> so do you think that he can speak Portuguese better than you can speak Spanish? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him, see what he says. Él está preguntando, Pedro, si... No, no. I try to speak Spanish with him, but... Um, we still, you know, speak English with them, and it's hard to learn English when you only see, you know, guys that speak English once or twice a week, so. <laughs> Probably pretty lonely up here. You want to ask him if he gets lonely up here being by himself? No, como que uno se acostumbra, porque cuando, cuanto más solo estás, te sientes un poco más tranquilo. Sí, claro. Muchos de acá nos acostumbramos a vivir solo. Cuando vamos a Perú, hay un momento que queremos estar solos. <laughs> he talks about visiting home to Peru, and every few years the herders get a chance to return home for a few months while they renew their work visa. They spend three months down in Peru with their family, and then they come back after that. They have a renewed visa, and then they can stay for three years. So it's a long time away from home. Volvimos a Perú, a los hijos lo vemos cada vez más grandes, ¿ya? Sí. ¿Y tienes cuántos hijos? Tengo cuatro. Cuatro hijos, sí. ¿Y hablas con su familia bastante? ¿Por teléfono? Sí. Sí, por teléfono. Con mi hijo. Diario hablo con mi hijo. Sí. Bueno.
been bringing a propane stove up here, and these little propane bottles cost so much flipping money. Oh, yeah. We figured we'd try a white gas stove, but he didn't know how to use it, so, oh. so we had to do a little teaching. Un día sí está mucho, mucho peor. Sí. En la olla que tengo, ya estaba negro, ya no. Y ahí otro día ya no. We had all evening to hang out with Pedro, so I did my best to make friends with him. Well, why don't you tell our Peruvian buddy that I'm about to change his life. Pedro, él dice que él está empezando a mudar su vida. Con su video. Welcome to America. Mountain Dew. Let's go. I thought you might try to change my life too. <laughs> I don't, we don't want our we don't want our new friend here to be drinking alone. <laughs> I ended the day knowing more about Pedro's job, but I still didn't know a lot about him. So hopefully tomorrow I can sit down and talk with him for a while. Before I show you day two, I want to be upfront with you guys. I've been using Onyx Maps way before I was ever sponsored by them. I mean, here's a screenshot of my map, and I think it's safe to say that I've been using the heck out of it. So let's talk about today's video sponsor, Onyx, because it's the best way to turn your phone into a GPS. The biggest reason I use Onyx is because it doesn't require cell phone service to work. On most of my trips when I'm filming videos like this one, I have no cell reception. Or I'll put my phone on airplane mode to save battery, but that doesn't matter. Onyx will still work, so I can track myself, drop pins, explore the map for nearby trails, and just about everything else a regular GPS would do. Onyx is also convenient because it's an app on your phone, so I always have it with me, and I didn't have to break the bank to buy an expensive GPS. So, if you're interested, I've got a discount code for new users. If you use promo code MULE, you'll save 20%. For some reason, you can't use a promo code on the App Store, so you'll have to create your account and buy your subscription on onyx.com. Then, you can log into your account on the app, and you should be good to go. Now, back to the video. Al principio no estuvimos como en otro planeta. Sí. <laughs> we woke up bright and early that morning and followed Pedro around as he did his job. While he worked, we asked him about his life in Peru. Well, ya en Perú no no está muy bueno el, la estabilidad económica. Mm -hmm. Por eso muchos venimos para acá a trabajar. I mean, they'll work, they'll work twice the amount of hours down there that we do, and get paid almost nothing for it. I mean, it's just, it's outrageous what they'll get paid for the amount of work that they're doing. So the fact that he's here, he's a long ways from home, whatever, but he's making a lot more money for a lot less work, and now his family, they can live a better life and have afford nicer things or just be able to survive without worrying is what it comes down to. In Peru, the working class has an average monthly income of 1,250 souls or 323 US dollars. The cost of living there is 995 souls or 257 US dollars. So if you're trying to raise a family on these wages, it's nearly impossible. Trabajando en Peru, no puedes construir una casa. No puedes educar a los hijos. But if you can afford college, which will lead to a better paying job, you can make nearly twice as much money. The opportunities that he has because he's up here, he can send his kids to college and he can build or buy a house and it just gives them a lot better life because he's here. It's crazy to think that a sheep herder in the U.S. can make more money than a college graduate can in Peru. Pedro has found a way to provide for his family in a way that most people wouldn't be able to in his situation. ¿Y cuando llegaste aquí antes andando de caballo o solamente cuando llegaste aquí? ¿Ya sabía andar de caballo? ¿En Perú? Sí. Sí, pero no tanto con la montura. Oh, sí. Es poco me trajeron tanque. 
Al principio lo tenía miedo, pero ahora es mi amigo. Y muy buen caballo. There is a huge learning curve for the herders when they first get hired on, and I was curious to know if Pedro had any crazy experiences earlier in his career. Yo me acuerdo, el rayo lo mató como algo de 50 ovejas entre corderos, ¿sabes? It was on the 4th of July, he was just up on the other side of this mountain. You know, it was his first time here, he didn't really know what was going on, but it says the 4th of July in the middle of the night, a lightning struck a pine tree that a bunch of sheep were sitting under and it killed about 50 of them. And so he went, you know, he's there and he saw all the 50 and they're all dead around there. And so he's just thinking, holy cow, I'm in trouble. Estaba muy preocupado, porque no sabía. Dice, ahora, pues ya me van a botar seguro del trabajo, ¿qué? And because you know, he just didn't know, and it was his first time here and had no idea what was going on. So, and, you know, our guy told him, he's like, No, it happens, it's not your fault, it's all good. So he's like, Oh, okay. We talked to Pedro for a long time, clear into the afternoon. After the sheep were all bedded down, we made our way back to camp, and it was finally time to say goodbye to Pedro. Adios. Adios. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Adios. Adios. Have a good one. As we made our way off the mountain, I couldn't help but think about one of the stories Pedro told us. It was about his favorite memory in the United States. He was in town with the rest of the herders on Morgan's ranch. He said uh, when we were lambing a couple of years ago, we were down and um, my dad turned on all the lights from the backhoes and trucks and all the lights, you know, and we turned on a whole bunch of lights and they were all so they could all go play soccer. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Trabaja todo el día y, y en la tarde, sí, jugando no, no se han cansado. Y, y sí, muy, muy contento me sentía. No. They Friday it. Night Lights, baby. Yep, they were pretty excited about it. Siempre, casi como en familia. Sí. Sí, no. Pienso que yo llegué a, un, a una compañía de unas personas muy buenas. <laughs> Gracias. Every morning, Pedro wakes up to a view that most people on earth won't get a chance to experience. His best friends are the horses and dogs he depends on, and who could ask for a more loyal friend? His life may be simple, but it's full of purpose. He's the reason his kids will be able to go to college, and the sheep he cares for will feed and clothe hundreds, if not thousands of people. To put it in simple terms, Pedro has an appreciation for the little things in life, and he doesn't take a single thing for granted. This is why I believe he is one of the happiest people I've ever met. Maybe we could all strive to be a little bit more like Pedro. This video was only a small look into what it takes to run a large sheep operation. I highly suggest you guys go watch the Morgan Mickle channel on YouTube because some of those videos might blow your mind. And of course, don't forget to use code MULE to save 20% on Onyx.com.